Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. And if you happen to like out of the park baseball, then all the better. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here with my 1962 Baltimore Orioles replay. Now, we've already played 1962, and we are currently in the off season of 1963. We will take a look at the standings from 1962. And as you can see, we weren't very good. We were 74 and 88. However, we started off a lot worse than that. So, um, you know, as far as percentage wise, percentage of games we were winning, initially we were a lot worse. So, to have finished where we did uh, was I actually, I think, pretty good. Now, there is a particular reason why I'm doing the 1962 um, Baltimore Oriole uh, playthrough. And that is because I'm not a Baltimore Orioles fan. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm a, uh, a Chicago White Sox fan. But I do live in Maryland. But I'm still, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a Orioles fan. But there was an, an intriguing story that we, that I saw uh, a documentary called the I think it was the fastball and it talked about different fastball pitchers and the, the technology of the fastball and how it's you know gauging uh, players fastball has evolved over time and they had um, a segment in there about a Baltimore Orioles minor league pitcher from the 60s named Steve Dolkowski, who never made it to the major leagues. He never made it to the Baltimore Orioles. Um, but according to all of the um, firsthand accounts of people that saw him play, people that played with him, uh, other players that have heard of him, he had a fastball that was unreal. He, um, there was a, a guy who was talking who said that he caught Dolkowski in the minor leagues. And uh, he had a fastball that split one of his shin guards. And another fastball hit him in the mask and actually bent one of the bars in his mask. That's how fast his fastball was. He never made it to the majors because he had a problem with control. He couldn't control the fastball. And he walked too many people, threw too many balls, potentially even hit too many people. Um, and then in 19, I think it was 1963, I want to say it was in 1963, that he, he seemed to have gotten somewhat um, moderate control and, um, <clears throat> and was pitching well enough in the spring that the Orioles had him slated to uh, make the uh, Orioles team out of spring training. And he had been fitted for a jersey and everything. And then on his last start of the spring, right before the, you know, uh, a few days before they were going to head north, uh, he threw a ball, he ran off the mound threw a, and uh, threw a ball to first base and uh, something popped. He felt something pop in his elbow. And, uh, and then he had a long rehab and time to come back and buy, and then he came back and his control was as bad as it was before. So very, it was actually a very heart wrenching story. And so he never made the major league. So what I decided I was going to do kind of, it was almost kind of on a lark. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to, um, I'm going to take those Orioles and I am going to make sure he makes the club. So let's take a look at uh, what he, let's go down to team statistics. Where are they? those? There we go. Uh, team statistics, we'll go to Baltimore. Uh, let's go to pitching. Uh, there we go, pitching. And uh, where is he? There he is. You can see right here, Steve Dolkowski. And um, in our 1962 season, where I had him on Baltimore, as you can see, 
He was one and one with two saves. He had a, now this is incredible. He had a 178 earned run average. And in 50 and two thirds innings, he only allowed 37 hits. Uh, but he, um, he walked 50 and he struck out 63. So, um, you can see, and then here's his ratings. I'm not really an authority on the ratings in the game. And in fact, I don't know why the fastball is only a uh, 45, but uh, I would think the fastball should be higher. But the statistics that he puts up here, except for the ERA, you would think that ERA would be higher because as a matter of fact, that his whip was 172. So he had a whip that was almost about the same as his ERA, um, whereas the whip was high, but the ERA was low. So I don't know how you could have a 178 earned run average and a 172 whip. Um, he had been signed through uh, just, I think, just through 1962. So I had extended his contract. And so he will pitch for us in 63 now um we are currently let me see here if i can find out we yes currently we're in october uh 25th of 1962 so we will go through the uh the uh off season I don't do a lot of the uh, off-season stuff. I mean, I respond to trades, and we did actually do some trades um, with this team. So we did. I did acquire some other players from other places. Um, let me let me see here. Let's go to the team home screen, and uh, maybe let's see. Maybe transactions. Let me see if I can find transactions. Uh, organization yeah transaction log so uh, if we go down let's see oh, I guess I want to see what's the most recent Uh, we did also, I did fire some players or uh, some coaches all throughout the system. Um, we had poor performers. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we traded 35-year-old Johnny Temple and 24-year-old minor league right-handed pitcher Bob Scott to the Boston Red Sox, getting 22-year-old shortstop Glenn Beckert in return. And we'll see how that works out. If we look at Glenn Beckert, uh, you can see he avoids K's very well. He um, doesn't really do anything too much else all that well. Although his contact has the uh, ability, right now it's at, at 45 and it has the ability to get up to 60. Um, and in real life, he actually was pretty good for uh, many years. Although... His first year in real life in the major leagues was 1965. And you can see right here he's 22. So we're going to have to decide whether it's going to be prudent to bring him up right away or not to bring him up. But uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, to the manager's homepage. I, I have uh, a lot of the off-season stuff is going to be handled by the... Um, by the assistant GM, which is really the AI. Um, but we're going to like fast forward through a few of this, a few of these things. And let's go right up to the first day of the winter meetings. And then we will. And by the way, the New York Yankees swept the Pirates in the World Series coming off of 1962. Um, So let's see here. Let me go. Let's see what we've got in our inbox. Uh, we're going to just see if there's anything that applies to uh, to us. Because that's really all I'm concerned about. I don't really care too much about what the other teams are doing. Um, uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna move along. Let's go to after that. Player designated for assignment whose DFA runs out today. He must be a okay. Um, let's see. Well, let me see if I can find out. Oh, maybe that was uh, Black Glenn Beckert. Um, I am going to uh, place him on the... Right now, I'm going to go... Uh, right now, we're going to put him on the AAA roster. Oh, okay. I, I can't. Uh, that's fine. Well, I, I was trying to be careful with him, but he has a major league contract, so we'll just put him on the, uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll place him on the active roster. All right. So now does it let me get through? Yeah, now it's going to let me go through. So, we're going to go through to the winter meetings. We'll let things. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the manager's office and see what else we've got for. Uh, if there's anything that applies to us. See, and I like this, I don't, because there's things like signing international free agents and even the draft. I, I, I trust the computer to do the draft for me and draft the best available players, players that we need. Um, and so let's just keep moving. Hall of Fame vote. I really don't want to go through. I hate the voting. One thing you would know about me if you watched a few of the uh, out of the park videos that I've done in the past. Um, is that I really, really hate voting on awards. I think it's a waste of time. There's so many people that could actually win any of any number of those awards, and it's a and it's a personal thing. So let's see. Let's see what what it has to say here. Um, single season records. And, um, all right, not not too much going on there, so we're gonna fast forward through the Rule Five draft. Uh, let's get into January. I have a personal message, so we'll deal with that in a minute. So we selected Daryl Knowles in the Rule 5 draft, so that's pretty good. But we lost um, we lost Jack Fisher. I don't know who Jack Fisher is. Um, so let's just keep moving along. Get closer to the start of the season, I have reviewed the team's financial state, and of this moment, uh, after seeing how the off season has gone, I have decided to raise your team's budget from uh, 2320000 to 2600000 Based on our current financial position, I have decided to make the following adjustments to your budgets. Raise the scouting budget from 41000 to 47400 Raise the player development budget from 62000 to 71100 and raise the draft budget from 38000 to 99600 So uh, there you go. You may review all your financials on the office page, but, you know, I'm not going to really do that right now. We're just trying to get going and get through the... Uh, 
get through the preseason so that I can get to uh, where we need. And we've got uh, Tom Haller was another guy that I went out and I made a trade for. And Jim Bunning. We also I also went out and traded for Jim Bunning during last season. Um, but let's see if we can get this to almost. I want to get this for like right up to the opening day almost. And I, no sooner do I try to do that um, that, that I get a message and um, and that derails the entire thing, which is what it's really. A, I know that there's a setting I can put it on where it won't bother me, but. Let's see if we can just get through this um, and get up to opening day. And that's where I, I'm going. I plan to stop us at opening day, but we will we'll take a look at the rosters and see who we who, exactly who we have. Um, and. Uh, you know, who's on the team. And what we what we might expect. So today we're, I'm going to say finish today, and it looks like it's setting it up for next season. And we'll also take a look at what they they plan for us in 1963. What the projection is for our Orioles in 1963. Uh, we didn't have a very good spring, though, from what I saw as the uh, simulation was going on. So we'll we'll have to see how that uh, how it looks. And I also don't manage the team. I'm just the general manager. I actually hired a manager. This will be a personal message uh, welcoming me to the season. Welcome to the new season. Let's go to um, uh, let's go to Major League Baseball reports and information, and preseason predictions. And it has us, um, it has us as 85 and 77, so that would be really nice if that could happen. If we could be 85 and 77, it would be an improvement from last year. And uh, let's go take a look at the uh, rosters and transactions and take a look at our major league roster. So this is the, uh, oh, we're going to, it looks like we're going to have to cut down a couple of guys, but um, I can do that and, you know, fine tune everything right before opening day. But we got Jerry Adair, who we had last year, Barber, there's Beckert, um, newly acquired, Jackie Brandt, Jim Bunning, Dolkowski is still on the team, um, and he would be because I would make sure he was, Cal Emery. So is Cal Emery like a, where was he? I guess we got him, uh, did we get him from the 1961? No, he was, or 1962, he was in, he was in AAA. So um, let's go back to rosters and transactions. And... Um, Chuck Estrada, Jim Gentile. Jim Gentile, by the way, had a great year last year. He hit four, over, I think, over 40 home runs. Haller, Ron Hansen, Whitey Herzog, Billy Heft, Charlie Lau, Dave McNally, uh, John Miller, Milt Pappas, Boob Powell, Robin Roberts, Brooks Robinson, Earl Robinson, Nate Smith, Russ Snyder, Herman Storetto, Fred Valentine, and Hoyt Wilhelm, who is, by the way, going to be 40 years old in this season coming up. Um, and let's just take a quick look. I just want to take a quick look at AAA, see who we got down there. Harley Anderson, Wayne Edwards. Is that the Wayne Edwards that was on? No, that's got to be a different one. Um, Art Quick, Jim Roos. Bob Saverin, Barry Shetone, Wes Stock, Studstill, Eddie Watt. All right. So anyway, that's where we are. Uh, they're projecting us to win 85 games, which I think I would be 
really happy with. Um, we we're going to start out the season against Washington. I will have to make a couple of cuts and, uh, you know, tighten a few things up. And then we will be ready to start the 1963 Orioles season. And I will be doing, I probably will do like an opening day video or uh, another video a little later on, maybe in a week or two. Uh, with opening day and then like simming a few games and getting like the first week under our belts and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but right now that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke.